Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Arrow Season 7. Today we're going to be talking about the new episode titled The Slab Side Redemption. This was episode 7, and it was incredible. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. So, I haven't done an Arrow review for a few episodes now. I did one for that episode where they revealed that Felicity was dead in the future. I just haven't had the time. Like, as you know, The Flash and Supergirl are my, like, priorities that I do every single week, and then, like, I just am so busy on the Arrow days normally, so I'm fitting this in today to talk about this incredible episode. James Bamford really brought it. This episode was executed in such style, with visceral action seeping throughout this incredible episode. Filled with incredible stunt work and incredible cinematography, it just really pushed the limits of what Arrow is actually like, and I think they've always had really solid action, but this showed like the limits of what they can go to, that they can really bring it in a very professional way. It reminded me of The Raid. It obviously isn't as choreographed and as insane as The Raid's action, because I think that's one of the best action films in many years, and this really, really was top-notch TV action, probably better than most action in films. It really, really brought it in this episode. So. We're going to be talking about the different plot points now, and the first thing I want to talk about is Stanley, because he has been haunting my memory for the past few days since Paigey revealed what his comic book origin story was, and I never knew this about him, but in this episode, he kills a guard, and Bronze Tiger is imprisoned for the wrong reason, he didn't do it, it was actually Stanley, and it's revealed in this episode that he killed many people before, and in the comics, surprise surprise guys, he was a child murderer. Yes, very very creepy. We've been sort of sympathizing with this guy the whole time through throughout the entire season. And it's really really just haunting that this guy, who seems so innocent, actually murders all these people. Obviously in the TV show, he's not probably a child murderer as far as we know. We know he is a murderer though, so... Maybe they're holding back on the fact that they don't want to have a child murder on the TV show because that's like hardcore shit. But nevertheless, this was an incredible twist. Obviously, we started to sort of theorize maybe a few weeks ago that there was something wrong with him. And then at the end of last episode, they teased that Stanley killed this guard and it was revealed in this episode that he's actually a serial killer of sorts. So. By the end of the episode, he actually escapes, so he's going to be returning maybe in a few episodes time. Apparently, he's not going to be in the next episode, or like the episode after. He should be back sometime in the near future. Really looking forward to that because I am extremely haunted by him. And in the episode, he in fact kills Brick by the end of the episode, so that was a big death. Additionally, Samsung is killed by Bronze Tiger in the episode, he's burned alive. Maybe he survives, I don't know, but it seemed like he was dead. And so they killed off two major characters who have been very prominent in this season, and I've been loving seeing Bronze Tiger, Samson, and Brick all in this season, because I think they're really, really solid, especially when they're around each other, and they have an amazing fight in the episode. So Oliver, supposedly, at the start of the episode, he is supposedly going to be released and transferred out of Slabside and be free. And everything goes to shit when Diaz visits Oliver in the prison and Oliver loses his shit. And I think Kirk Acevedo brings his A-game as this manipulative villain that is ruthless. And I love in that scene with Oliver, Diaz really, really manipulates him, gets into his mind, mentioning Felicity and just the subtle nature of how Kirk actually acts really sort of intensely brings up that fear inside the spectator that being us obviously and i think the way it's directed the close-ups really really affect you as the spectator and i just love that scene that scene went on for quite a while and it was entirely intense and enjoyable at the same time so oliver by the end of that scene breaks the glass and he is dragged away by the prison guards as he shouts, Diaz is here, and wow, I just love that scene. All hell breaks loose in the prison once Diaz actually 
gets inside the prison and infiltrates it by taking out some of the guards. He ends up killing a load of these guards and he throughout the episode is so calm and calculated as mentioned before by the end of the episode after his fights which we'll talk about in a minute after the massive prison brawl or battle royale however you want to actually talk about it he gets sent back into oliver's cell and oliver locks him up shuts it i thought that was really poetic the way they did that because that's like how Oliver's been doing this for the past couple months and it does look like at the end of the episode that Diaz potentially might be dead but we know that Kirk has actually been on set and he will return so he's not dead he's on the brink of death and we'll talk about his fight scene in a minute with Oliver and so like I mentioned throughout the episode there is massive prison brawls the stunt work, as mentioned before, is absolutely incredible. They're on their top game with the camera work and the cinematography all intertwining together with Oliver and Bronze Tiger teaming up against Diaz and the inmates who are all sort of rebelling and rioting as Diaz rounds them up and they all take hostages in this situation and Bronze Tiger was this outstanding addition to this episode with him sort of getting this more redemption arc with him being able to possibly return to Lila and maybe the Suicide Squad again maybe they were teasing that I feel like they were he seemed more as an anti-hero by the end of this episode and the fight scenes that he is in with Oliver or just him alone is just incredible all the prison guards are held hostage and it's those two that helps everyone and Oliver breaks out of his prison cell as we go back earlier into the episode and the fight scenes are extremely visceral with the use of wide angle lenses, fisheye like lenses which I found personally just succulent and really sucked me into what was going on with the choreographed action and how the camera was actually choreographed and in this episode additionally they push their time slot to the real limits because obviously this is the CW but the use of blood and the use of action and the fact they were able to do all these stunts to such an extreme level enhances the action in James Bamford's extremely good long takes like my favourite scene of the episode was the long take throughout the prison when he kept on going up and down between Oliver and Bronze Tiger as they are going up the levels of the prison in order to get to Diaz and it's just incredible. It's one long take and I think it's been done in such a way that is just excellent and I have no complaints about that. So as we head towards the end of the episode, Diaz and Oliver have a final fight as the prison begins to get engulfed in flames and as I mentioned earlier, Diaz actually beats Oliver back into his very own cage, so 4587, as we've been seeing every single episode. And the fact that he went back into that cell it signifies that this is the end for him, where he started, and this is where he will end it right now. And instead, Oliver gets the upper hand on Diaz during the scene, and Diaz is beaten to a pulp and you see his nearly dead corpse just lying there in the prison and it remains to be seen what they're going to be doing with him but we know that he's returning like he is definitely been captured by the authorities and surely they're putting him in higher security prison rather than just in a police station additionally we all theorize that in this episode Diaz probably planned to get captured last episode but in fact it's revealed that whilst he was captured he came up with a plan to escape and come to Oliver and actually kill him in the prison and that was kind of surprising to me because I did expect him to have this all planned out but I don't have any complaints to do with that it was just something that I wasn't expecting and it worked really well obviously with him invading the prison and Oliver at the end of the episode he gets released to the outside world as he meets Felicity and Diggle so he's finally getting released from the prison this has taken seven episodes of him in prison and I have to say the scenes with him in prison have been outstanding and have most definitely been the best part about this season so far it's really held up and it was just an incredible part of the season and I'm gonna miss it but I'm looking forward to what happens next we've seen the new trailer for the next episode for episode 8 which will act as the mid-season finale next week as episode 9 is the crossover episode so get ready for that and then we have a long break after that until we get back to normal Arrow 
on episode 10. And so as Oliver gets released, Felicity and Oliver reunite for the first time in ages for in physical contact. Like they've obviously been having phone calls throughout his time in prison. And so as they kiss, the camera pans out to a wide shot of the island, which actually, if you look carefully and loads of people have been spotting this, it doesn't match up with the previous shot and Diggle has disappeared. He was there at the start, but now he's not there. So looking at this, like re-watching the episode, I was like, uh, this is a little bit weird and I don't have a problem with it. It's just a continuity error and it's just a little strange to think that they didn't like go over that bit and look, but that's not really a complaint. That's just like a little nitpick in the episode probably my only nitpick like this episode was just outstanding really had nothing wrong with it and throughout the episode we get some awesome team ups with unlikely allies with Oliver and Bronze Tiger and those fight scenes were incredible obviously some of it was hand to hand some of it was using weapons and the sort of layers of the fight and how they went from high to low you know James Bamford as the director in this episode he's outstanding you know going down with the action and actually bringing you as a spectator the whole way throughout the fights in the episode is just incredible and I just can't praise this episode enough and we get some new backstory as I mentioned with Stanley and what's going to be happening with him he's definitely going to be squaring up and meeting the Green Arrow, his hero supposedly, once again sometime in the very near future. Additionally, like I've been saying, the action sequences are just some of the best action sequences I've seen on TV in all time, like that's not even an exaggeration. And just everything in this episode really brought it. Obviously there was very very little of Felicity and Diggle and really anyone else in the episode from Team Arrow, which I thought was really great because like I mentioned, I think the prison stuff this season has been easily the best thing and having a full episode dedicated to that was just the best thing that could have happened. And I have to give credit to the actors, Kirk Acevedo and Stephen Amell especially, as well as the Bronze Tiger actor and additionally James Bamford for all the stunt work, especially the actors for pulling off the stunt work, actually doing it, making it look very authentic and James following them. You know, it's just incredible and I cannot praise this episode enough. I think this may be my favourite episode in all of DC TV this entire season from any of the shows. It was just so good. So, 5 stars easily. If I could, I would give it a 10 out of 5 stars. It's just incredible and it's thoroughly enjoyable. I recommend you do go watch it again because I've watched it two times now and i just fallen in love with it and I'm really looking forward to the next episode. Hopefully it holds up even though we're not going to be in the prison. So anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video and you do want to see more Arrow videos, please let me know down in the comments below. Also please be sure to follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with all my reactions to the DC TV shows or anything else related to that. And finally, please be sure to subscribe to my podcast channel or my film channel. I do videos there all the time so if you guys are new around here because of this Arrow video, please be sure to do that and yeah, just share the video around. If you love this episode, I highly recommend that you share it to all your friends and actually just talk about this because I think it really deserves the recognition it is getting. Uh, yes, I can see there's probably going to be some backlash because so many people are praising the episode so much like myself. So share this video to all the people that love this episode. And yeah, so I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Strong, it doesn't make us weak. Tongue tied to service like shy pretty.